Good Monday morning. I am MPJ, and you are watching Fun Fun Function. A lot of people comment that I use arrow functions a lot in my videos, so I thought I'd make a video on just that today. You have probably seen them around, they look like this, kind of, and they are basically a shorter function syntax. Mmm, kind of. What I mean by that kind of is that this, the this keyword, behaves differently. We're not gonna talk about uh, the this aspect of arrow functions at all in this video. Because I think that the most exciting and most important aspect of arrow functions is that they are so much shorter. That's the important part and that is what we are going to talk about today. I'm going to show you how to use arrow functions in just a minute, but before I do that I want to talk about the why of them. Arrow functions are shorter, but do we, do we need a shorter function syntax? I mean, another episode of Fun Fun Function has been suggesting that you should be restrictive about how many functions you create. So why do I like these? What, what value does having a short function syntax give us? I think that the big thing with at the arrow function syntax is that it is so much shorter than the normal function syntax. It is extremely succinct. It's just the bare minimum of syntax that is required to express that this is a function. The fact that arrow functions are so terse allows us to use functions in a new way that we could not do before. We can now do functions that are small, inline, and single purpose. These aspects are of course not unique to arrow functions. You can make small inline and single purpose functions with the normal function syntax, but the fact that there is so little extra boilerplate code for every function makes you do this a lot more and to a much larger or smaller degree. And this combined that that creates, at least for me, a completely new way of programming. And that is what I am going to show you today. All right, let's look at some code. Let's look at this dragon events variable here. It's an array, as you see, mm -hmm, of objects. You can envision this as uh, something that is part of a game. So these are events from a dragon. So the dragon can attack, it can yawn for some reason with a value. I don't know exactly what that is. It might be the size of the yawn. <laughs> or, uh, and it can eat, and it can uh, eat a target such as a horse because dragons are large. And it can also attack, and this is the event that I want to draw your attention to. It, the, uh, the attack has a value and uh, it has a target, uh, so it can uh, attack the player Fluffigans or it can attack the player Dorkman here. Our objective is to figure out what the total damage uh, is uh, from all these attacks on player Dorkman. So this, what will this be? First of all, let's start by filtering out all the attacks, I think. So we just do dragon events dot filter, and we are going to do this using normal functions at first. I'm gonna call this variable event, and I'm going to return uh, event dot type uh, equals uh, da, 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 attack. And I'm going to just console log out at the end of the script the uh, total damage on Dorkman. And I'm going to echo that variable out. And we are going to run the script. So you see that, uh, uh, yes, let me add, uh, I, want, I want a line break there to make it easy to read. All right, so it will echo out uh, an array here, weep, uh, and it will have uh, only the attack uh, objects. Uh, and uh, you see that it has filtered out, you want to need because those are not of event type. If filter 
confuses you, you should stop watching this episode now and instead check out this episode over here where I explain how filter works. So, we have the attack values, but we also have the uh, the attack on the on the Fluffykins player, and we don't want that player. We want to filter that player out as well. So we add another filter, and we uh, add a, an event there, and we're going to return where the event dot target equals a player dorkman. We run that again. So now we only have the Dorkman uh, attacks here. You see that it has filtered out this one, the player Fluffykins. Next up, we're interested in getting these values out here, these, uh, these 12s. We'll do that using map. Map. <laughs> event, and we'll return event.value. Right. And we run it. Cool, now we have an array of just the values here. And you know what? If map confuses you, there's an episode for that. Okay, so now finally we just want to add these two together. Uh, we can do that using reduce. So yes, go function, uh, da, da, previous value, and the uh, value here and we just go reduce I think we're gonna do like uh, prev and we're gonna call that uh, zero and we're gonna add value here uh, and we're going to run this oh reduce is not defined no because I am being dumb I'm gonna change that to return of course Node function, yes, 24. By the way, if reduced confused you, you <laughs> we now have this uh, pretty, pretty cool functional chain here of work that is being done. We're filtering out the attacks and then we are filtering out the right players and then we are filtering out just the event values, the damage here, and then we are summing it together in the reduce here. It's nice that it's cleanly separated, but, you know, there's so much boilerplate here. The logic is just this, and this, and this, and this. So this here, this is just boilerplate for every function. And that is a bit annoying because the boilerplate is, you know, it's almost as big as the logic of the functions themselves. Before arrow functions existed, this here, these two duplicates, I would be, uh, I would be kind of tempted to combine these, uh, combine these two functions into one, and just pull this thing in here and paste it in here and go uh, do something, do something like this, and and delete this function. Let's do that there. So now I've saved one of these uh, these boilerplate function syntax things uh, and made the whole thing a bit shorter. But you know, I have this function here. This is this is now doing two things in one, and I can't really before I could describe these two things with words. Like if I go back. Uh, I could have called this is this function is dorkman, and I call have called this uh, is attack, and they would have been reusable in in other parts of the code. Uh, well, not this because that's not dorkman because this is a silly example, but this is a valid case I think. You know, is attack is theoretically uh, reusable. And even if it's not reusable, it's nice that it does one just one simple thing. Let's try refactoring this with arrow functions and see what it feels like. So I will start by removing this. And instead, I will add an arrow. I will remove this and I will add an arrow. And I will... Oh, remove that as well. Because one unfortunate side effect of uh, arrow functions is that 
they cannot be named. And um, that is okay, I think, because when you're using functions in line, you normally don't need the functions to be named. And I will go here, remove that function, and replace it with an arrow. Move that function, replace it with an arrow. Let's run it and see that it still works. It does. Now remember that I said that arrow functions are often small and single purpose, and when, when something is small and single purpose, it tends to be on just one line. And this brings us to an awesome feature of arrow functions, in my opinion, probably the most important one, and that is that if your code is one statement, like, uh, like, like this one here, we can make it return that statement implicitly. Let me show you. If I remove uh, the brackets here, bam, and I remove the return, bam, bam, bam. See, I just remove the brackets. We'll do that in this function as well. Remove the return. Boom, 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 right? I will also remove it here. Again, we do the same thing. We move the angle or the... I don't know what the name of the uh, of these things are. I've never learned. In, in Swedish, you just call them fågelvingar, bird swings. Either way, I'll remove them here as well. Bam. Remove this return here. Boom, boom, boom. And let's run it. It's still 24, it still works. So because these are just single statements, they're not an entire piece of code where multiple variables are being assigned, it's just one statement, we can do them like this in, in just one line and have the return statement being completely implicit. In the case of the reduce statement, we have multiple arguments. And in that case, it makes perfect sense to have the parentheses. It would look it would look really weird if it looked like this. However, in the case of the other functions, these ones, they only have one, uh, one argument to them, so this would kind of make sense. Can that work? Why, yes it does. So if you have just one parameter, to your function, you can completely omit the uh, the parentheses, which is pretty cool. So now this is really small. Let me just paste in the old code uh, next to it, just so you see like how big the difference is here. I think this is kind of huge. Do you see now how this thing here that I talked about earlier, with these two events, it felt annoying that there was so much of this boilerplate between the two, so you were tempted to add these two, two together. Uh, well, in, the, in this case here, this is not at all disturbing because there isn't much boilerplate for the function. It's, it's just this thing. The next thing I'm gonna show you is a bit more uh, controversial and uh, mattering on taste. I like to do it, not everybody does, but since this piece of code here, it's so contained, right? I can, I can see all this in, in one glance. Uh, I know that this is, like, this is about dragon events. I can see this here. So this event here, like, I find it to be almost over-descriptive. I think that, for me, it works a lot better with just something like E like this. Because I, I know that we are iterating dragon events in this in this code, I see that here. I might keep this value here as a full text because we are changing the context of what is being iterated with the map here. Uh, but, you know, other people might go the full length and do just x for it. Because that means that this function is now completely generic, so we can call it like uh, const uh, total reducer uh, and just paste it in total reducer, reduce to total. 
like because when I uh, when I break functions out and name them, I tend to want them to be a verb. Does this still work? No. Oh yeah, I can't declare total damage on Dorkman twice. I'll comment this out so that we can keep it around for reference. Uh, help. Note. All right, still works. In the same way, all of these are pretty reusable. This this is pretty specific. It doesn't feel reusable, but this one uh, is probably something as I add more things in my game here in the future. This would probably be something that I reduce to is uh, is attack and. Uh, Or maybe not. I'm not sure, but you can. You get it. In summary, arrow functions is a shorter function syntax. Kind of. There is more to them, but this is what we have been focusing on today. Why arrow functions? Because they allow us to use functions in a new way. Because arrow functions allow us, or at least incentivizes us, to make uh, small, inline, and single-purpose functions to a much larger degree than we did before. Links to the code and other juicy nuggets of information is in the description. You have watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. I am MPJ. I post new episodes every Monday morning, 0800 GMT. You will not remember that. That is why a lot of viewers choose to subscribe to Fun Fun Function so that you don't miss out on the next episode. You should uh, check out the channel, <laughs> click, touch the channel down below and see if uh, <laughs> this is a channel that you want to subscribe to. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.